Being responsible for business continuity isn't easy. We must consider a wide range of failure scenarios. And most of the applications require high availability these days. Applications rely heavily on the database and therefore we must ensure that they are always available or at least most of the time. We'll have to make sure that we have something to continue to work with even if some part is unavailable due to some reason. Some businesses require that the data is available in any way or at any cost. The first step towards achieving high availability is making sure that we don't rely on a single database server. Therefore, data should be replicated to at least one standby replica. PostgreSQL provides a wide range of solutions for replication. In this section, we'll discuss shortly about log shipping, which is the old school version of doing replication. Then, streaming and logical replication which are superior solutions, are discussed extensively in separate videos. Here, we'll discuss them at a very high level just to see where they fit within the high availability solutions. And there is also the SQL replication methods. For example, pgpool2 can do this, but they are rarely used. We just mention it here since it can be a feasible solution. Furthermore, to achieve high availability for a cluster, we also need to consider the failover mechanism. This can be done either manually using the pgctl promote command or we can also do it automatically using open source tools. Here we have various options to choose from. Finally, after the failover has happened and the issue with the master server has been solved, we might want to restore back the fail node. This process is called failback. And we should also pay attention here to not lose the changes that have been written to the standby while the master was done. At this step, we can again choose to do it manually using the pg rewind command, or we can make use of the open source tools to help us automate the more annoying portions of recovering. Before setting up high availability for a cluster, we need to know exactly which are the requirements. If we have the right information, we can suggest the right high availability solution. So, here are a few questions that we can ask ourselves or the customer. Every question has a purpose that helps in architecting the final solution. First, how critical is the data? Based on the answer, we can decide if we need more than one standby server, or maybe more than one data center. We might also decide that synchronous replication is a must. Of course, in all cases, we'll have to trade off availability and probably pay with higher latencies. What are the expectations for the RTO and the RPO? This is a very critical part at business level. First, we set some objectives for the recovery time. Here, it's all about the nines. Basically, this represents how long the application can be down. For example, how long does it take to make the standby server a primary? Or does it need human intervention to promote a standby? Or does the setup allow for automatic failover? Then. The RPO represents the recovery point objective. Basically, how much data can we afford to lose? Or can we afford to lose any data? For example, in some particular cases, the standby may be behind the primary. In that case, if we need to fail over as soon as possible, we may lose the data that is not replicated yet to the standby. And this will be the case until the primary comes back again. We'll talk later about synchronous versus asynchronous replication and we'll mention which are the trade-offs for each solution. The next important question is whether we want an automatic failover solution or not. This is important because it will make the difference between a highly available system and a slightly available one. 
When we rely on a person to make the failover switch, it will probably take a lot of time until that person is available to log in and do the task. However, automatic failover is something that PostgreSQL doesn't have built in. We may need to create a few scripts to do that. Here, there are also some known issues such as the split brain problem which should be treated or at least thought about before moving to automatic failover. Fortunately, there are some tools available on the market that can help us with that. We'll talk about the failover tools in the next sections. Next is the cluster that we build, a single data center or we have more than one. We must consider a wide variety of failure scenarios, including the outage of a region. Normally, this is pretty unlikely to happen, but if the data availability is critical, then we need to implement a cross-center replication. Here, we might further ask how far apart are the data centers. We would need to know how far apart they are located so that we could analyze the replication lag upfront. Also, we should consider the day-to-day -day cost to maintain two such clusters in sync and the processing power for replication. Next, do we open the replica servers for read requests? We need at least one standby server for the high availability requirements. In this case, we might want to use the standby servers to reduce the load on the primary if this is too high. This applies only for the read statements. In this case, it's possible that we modify some data in the primary and retrieve it immediately from the standby. However, another question arises. How much is the maximum delay that we allow between the primary and the standby? If there is any lag between the two, we'll see different data than expected. So, depending on the requirements, we'll need to configure the replication. Moreover, if the data on the primary is encrypted, we should use the same process to pull the data from the standby. Another question is what are the known limitations and trade-offs for a specific solution? A perfect solution for all use cases doesn't exist. Especially for distributed systems, each solution has some trade-offs and limitations. Fortunately, they are normally known and well documented. Therefore, we should at least be aware of them before starting a certain path. Along the way, we might still need to redesign the solution. It all depends on what we want to achieve. PostgreSQL can continuously archive the content of a database and store the changes in some wall log files. This is referred as worm standby or log shipping. Then, each standby server will operate in a continuous recovery mode, reading the log files from the primary. This configuration has a minimal performance impact on the primary server. However, as the source waits until the log file is full before shipping the log file, there is some delay between the source and the target. Also, as a result of this, the standby server is not available for access. But we can configure the replica database as a hot standby to not wait for the log files to be full but send the changes as soon as possible. In this mode, we will also be able to execute read-only queries or selects. Still, log shipping is the old school of replicating data and not really used anymore unless we are stuck on some old version of PostgreSQL. Currently, the go-to solutions are streaming and logical replication. These two solutions also cover most of the use cases that are provided by replication. When we set up streaming replication, a standby replica connects to the master and stream wall records from it. In PostgreSQL, streaming replication is considered to be one of the fastest and safest method for replication. Theoretically, there could still be a small lag between the primary and the standby. However, the lag is minimal even on very busy transactional servers. While in streaming replication, we can change between synchronous or asynchronous replication without much effort. 
By default, the replication is asynchronous. This is normally easier to manage. If necessary, we can upgrade to synchronous replication. This ensures that the client app is given a success message when the change is not only committed to the master, but also successfully replicated on the standby server as well. There are multiple levels of synchronization here, and normally, as we increase the synchronization guarantees, we decrease the performance. The lesser the durability selection, the faster the acknowledgement, and this affects the overall throughput and the performance of the system. While it's technically possible to use standby servers configured with logical replication to achieve high performance, this is still a less common solution. This is because a standby server should be able to take the place of another server and the more they resemble to the master, the better. This is not really the use case for logical replication. Here, PostgreSQL allows users to perform a selective replication of a subset of the tables found on the master. Still, this doesn't mean that we can't copy everything from the master. However, in streaming replication, everything gets replicated by default. Furthermore, a slave configured with logical replication can also be configured to replicate from multiple masters. One situation where this is helpful is when we need to replicate data from several PostgreSQL databases to a single server for reporting and data warehouse tasks. As a conclusion, logical replication is still a very good solution for many other use cases, but not the best option for high availability. In some use cases, we might need to set up more than one standby. PostgreSQL provides the ability to stream changes from one standby to many other standbys in both streaming and logical replication. However, this kind of setup puts some stress on the primary. In this case, three standby servers are fed from the primary server. Also, which secondary server should take over in case there is a primary failure? So, a second option would look like this. Here, the load will be more or less evenly distributed with each server feeding at most one secondary server. However, one issue with this approach is that there can be a significant delay, especially for the last server in the chain. So, a third option could be this one. Here, because the secondary server feeds more than one server, we avoid the big delay for the last server in the chain. Also, in the second and third options, it's clear which secondary server should take over in the event of a primary failure. For high availability with zero data loss, we should use streaming synchronous replication. However, there are still some red flags that we should be aware of. First, synchronous replication slows down all data modification drastically. To work reasonably well, the network latency between primary and standby has to be very low. This is why it's less common to use synchronous replication between different data centers. Second, synchronous replication reduces the availability of the whole system. This is because failure on the standby server prevents any data modification from succeeding. For this reason, we would need at least two synchronous standby servers, one that is kept synchronized and one as a stand-in. Third, even with synchronous replication, is not guaranteed that reading from the standby after writing to the primary will give you the new data. This is because, by default, the primary doesn't wait for the wall to be replayed on the standby. If we want that, we need to set the synchronous underscore commit configuration to be remote apply on the primary server. But in this case, some conflicts between the queries on the standby and the wall replay could appear and we'll have to deal with them. The other option is to use asynchronous streaming replication. This will provide high availability and better performance, but with a low risk of data loss. In both cases, we are talking about streaming replication. 
Logical replication can also be used to build synchronous replication solutions. However, here are some special case issues that may or may not apply to your own use cases. We won't get into much more details here, we are just raising awareness. Once we have the replication set up, how do we ensure that we can avoid downtime? For this, we'll have to make the failover happen automatically. There are many auto-failover tools available on the market that can integrate with PostgreSQL. The following is a list of the most popular open source solutions built for PostgreSQL. Tools like this can solve many of the pain points related to automatic failover implementation. For instance, Patroni tool remains consistent across all servers and is generally resistant to network partitions and split brain problems. Patroni is a PostgreSQL cluster management framework which stores and talks to a distributed consensus key value store and decides on the state of the cluster. In this setup, we use ETCD for consensus management. This layer handles leader election and decides the leader among a cluster of servers that are partitioned by network. In the event of a failover, Patroni promotes the slave that has been elected as a leader by the ETCD tool. First, let's take a look at a simple high availability example. This can be implemented with one primary and one standby server. In this example, the client application connects only to the primary for both the read and the write operations. Here, the failover mechanism is manual. Either we create a trigger file on the standby server or we promote the standby using the pgctl promote command. Once a new primary is available, we'll need to update the client app with the new primary details. This looks like an acceptable high availability solution, but not the best. It has a few manual steps which would increase your downtime in case of a failure. In this example, we have two data centers. We have one primary and three standby servers. Here, the client application connects to an HA proxy load balancer. So, in this case, the client app can connect to the standby for read operations. HA proxy will distribute the read requests to all available servers. Furthermore, we configured the replication between the primary and the standby in the same data center to be synchronous as there will not be much delay in the same data center. But a replication between the primary and one of the standby in other data center is asynchronous as there will be some delay. Also, the fourth standby server is a cascading replica to the third standby. In this way, we can reduce the load on the primary. Here, we can use Rep Manager or Patroni to make the failover automatically in case the primary crashes. In this example, if only the primary server in the first data center is not available, then the standby on the same data center will take the primary position. If the whole data center is down, then the third standby takes the primary position. Furthermore, if the primary is not available and the failover is executed, then HA proxy would take care of sending the connections to the server's left automatically. We don't need to make changes on the client application. 